So hey guys, we're here at the Amsterdam Tesla showroom. Uh, we weren't invited, so uh, we're trying to gate crash and get in. That's not really working. But I did manage to shake JB Stravel's hand and thank him for the inspiration that Tesla has been giving us. And um, in fact, I was able to give him two t-shirts and talk about our electric speedboats. Here they come right now, passing down. And there they go. <laughs> we'll hang around and uh, see what we can do uh, for the next of the day. Well, not on the guest list, but we wouldn't be American fanboys if we didn't make it in. So we gate crash this Tesla party. Let's see what's going on inside and uh, talk a little bit about battery technology. So. Uh, this day is a good day for a Tesla fanboy like myself, and uh, let's see what we can see inside. Heel erg snel het woord geven aan Elon Musk. Geef hem een hartelijke applaus. Hello everyone. Uh, well, welcome to the, the, te the Tesla Service Center. <laughs> um, it's uh, good to see everybody. Um, and I mean, let me just start off by saying thank, thank you for buying a Model S. Uh, thank you for your support. <laughs> so I'm, I'm here with uh, JB Strabel, who's the CTO and co-founder of the company. Um, and um, you know, the, and the main thing is we wanted to just uh, come and, and uh, you know uh, meet you and uh, hear feedback, hear thoughts. Um, you know, answer any questions that you might have, uh, and then, like I said, just express uh, yeah, appreciation for your support. So that's the that's the main thing. Um, and uh, as I think most people know, uh, the Netherlands is our European headquarters, um, and we do uh, final assembly of the of the car uh, just right over here in in, in Tilburg. Um, so uh, you know, it's worked out very well, and we're very happy to have made that decision. So. Um, yeah, it's it's been been really great. Um, let's see. So I, I'm I'm happy to just like take questions, talk about whatever you'd like. Uh, it's meant to be kind of a town hall, kind of informal. Uh, just you know, at, have conversation, ask questions, that kind of thing. So it's far away. What would you like to ask? Okay. Sure. It, it, this, it, it, um, it was, there's some difficulty charging um, at the gentleman's house in Belgium. Yeah. Um, and uh, JB, do you want to take that? Yeah, I, I can maybe talk to a few of the challenges we've uh, we've run into that we did not expect. So we're, we, we're sorry for that. That's not how that's supposed to work, of course. Um, there are parts of the grid in Belgium that we've discovered that actually uh, you know operate a bit more like Norway does. Um, and not to get too technical, but it, it actually is a, it's isolated in a way. It's not grounded in the same way that, that you know we developed and kind of expected and tested with. So. You know, this is it is able to work. We just need to you know, have a new type of uh, you know, mobile connector for that, that part of the grid, and also a software update that allows the car to to not kind of erroneously fault and think that there's a problem that there is not. So, it, do you want to give a timing for when that would be addressed? Yeah, that software update uh, is already going out uh, to cars in Norway and should be available uh, to people in Belgium. Uh, okay. Yeah. in about two weeks. So we're, we're hopeful that that will fix your problem at home. Um, I'm an owner of a, a proud owner of a Tesla. Um, and I like to share also. I have a little uh, foundation for car sharing and it's called Zoom. And I really want to uh, share more things. So also my, my own Tesla. So I'm really uh, curious if it is possible to have uh, software in the in the car to make it easier to share the Tesla. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, I support the whole idea of sharing, um, and I think that's it's a good concept. Uh, of course, we need to make sure that the fundamentals are taken care of uh, before such thing is is done. Uh, so, of course, we want to make sure that the priority is given to being able to charge effectively and operate the car and and have the core core functionality of the car keep getting better. Um, and uh, we have a version 6 of the software which is currently in beta testing which I think people will be super excited about. Um, 
and, and we, we, something we've been wanting to do for a while is to create a software developer kit so that people can create third party applications like sharing. Um, <laughs> so, um, you might ask when. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, as I said, the, the, since we, we're actually still a really quite a small company in, in the grand scheme of things, if you consider, like, you know, Tesla is maybe at a production rate of about 30,000 cars a year, but you compare that to Toyota, which is a full stock, and maybe 10 million cars a year. So sometimes the, the perception is that Tesla is a company with a ton of resources, but actually we're quite a small company with a, a small amount of resources. And we've got to make sure that the, the, the basic functionality of being able to charge when you want to charge and the car being super reliable and all that stuff that's got to take, take precedence. So that's, that's really our focus right now. Um, as JB was mentioning, uh, we're finding that there, there are pretty significant differences in electric, things like electrical grids. Uh, it, even within um, even within Belgium, there's like significant differences, or, or Norway or Germany. Um, so we want to make sure we take care of those issues. That's our focus. We're hopeful that you'll be able to um, do third-party applications next year. So that's our rough target, about a year from now. Uh, just that easy here. Um, so you're saying you know, one should hypothetically include uh, real-time traffic? Oh. Okay. Right. Right. It's it's actually it's not Garmin, um, it, but it's it's Navigon, uh, is is the mapping database. Um, the, the I think what you're alluding to is navigation should should look at the true speed of a road, not its theoretical speed. Um, and so I think I think a good approach here would be to uh, have use network intelligence, have the Teslas communicate with one another and take data sources from uh, other vehicles that are on the road. And when plotting uh, the, the least time, should that should take the true road segment speed, not the theoretical ones. Then, I, I think I, I think I think you're going to be happy very soon. <laughs> it's going to be better than Tom Tom. So. It should be, you know. Chairman, I suppose not. Okay, so I'm gonna, we'll, 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 we'll try to queue things up. Uh, yeah, okay. Hello, Elin. Uh, my name is Mark. Uh, I'm from a leasing company, uh, Mr. Green. Uh, we have a question about a vehicle to grid. Uh, when do you think it will be possible with the uh, Tesla to use vehicle to grid, or when there are possibilities to use vehicle to grid? JV, you want to take that one? Sure. <laughs> um, you know, it, Vehicle to grid. Is we want to actually want to sell our energy in our battery to our households. Yeah, it's, it's actually something that we kind of experimented with as far back as Roadster. You know, the, the first generation Roadster uh, could actually do that. And, uh, you know, the, the challenge has been really getting a system that, that made sense, um, you know, and actually was economic for many people. You know, right now we're focusing more on you know doing battery packs that are separate from the vehicle in order to do those same functions for backup power and things like that. And it's a product that we're starting to commercialize in the U.S. It will come to the you know various parts of EU soon. But you know we don't have an immediate plan to make the car you know power your house or go back and forth in that way. Okay. And when do you think it's possible to buy an, an, uh, a battery pack, an extra battery pack for your households in Europe, like you do now? Well, uh, it's probably, and hopefully towards the end of the year. I say next year for sure, uh, and hopefully towards the end of this year. Um, so it's uh, it, we essentially need to productize the the battery pack technology that's in the car for stationary storage in a, in a house. Um, and once we have that done, we, we, we'll, we'll try to scale up production as as fast as we can. I think next year would be a, a, a safe bet, and if we're lucky, towards the end of this year. Uh, and and one other thing I should mention. Um, you know, uh, uh, in, in the U.S., this functionality has been there for a while with Slacker, which is the ability to uh, play any song at any time. So you can just hold down the voice button and say, play anything. You know, Rolling Stones, uh, 
Well, no, it, it, well, unfortunately, Slacker did not have the licensing rights for music in Europe, uh, but we're working with RDO, um, and so you'll have that ability very soon to play any song at any time uh, in your in your car. Um, when I'm driving um, to a location, I want to know if I can charge there. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking my iPhone and I'm looking for chargers in three different apps. It would be really cool if we could just share all the uh, charging spots that are on our uh, Tesla map yeah. with each other, so that we know that our these are spots that we can really use, and they work with the with the Model S, and we know what speeds we can charge. That would be like a real cool uh, feature. Maybe I don't know if that's I, yeah. I agree. Uh, I, I think that that would be pretty cool. Um, th there are things you can download for like your iPhone or Android, which are um, which show charging locations. But it would be much better to have it integrated in the car. T totally agree. It's, it's it's on our list of things to do for sure. Um, so uh, I, I just, but I should mention with respect to the superchargers, um, we're, we're we're rapidly increasing the pace at which we're developing the superchargers and 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 laying them out, and so. Uh, by, by the end of this year, we, we expect uh, you can travel almost anywhere in Europe on the supercharger. Um, so that, uh, it, it, I mean, we're now, I think, about one supercharger a day, or, or close to one supercharger a day. Yeah, during the week, at least. In Europe, yeah. Uh, hello, Elon. Hello, right. Elon. Uh, on the stairs, okay, okay. yes. <laughs> My name is Frederick from Belgium. I have a question concerning the maintenance. Um, on the website, it said uh, you can choose maintenance 700 euros uh, roughly one times a year or uh, four years in one time. It's a bit cheaper then. But why is it so expensive when? There's almost no maintenance to do. You check the tires, you check the windscreen uh, fluids. <laughs> Why? And, and, and I right. already okay. read on internet that you said, yeah, well, Mercedes uh, with the S-Class is 700 euros. So we take that as, a, as an example. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you've got a good point there. It's, it's, it probably is, probably is a bit too high. We should we take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should say that for the warranty, it doesn't matter if you get the annual maintenance. So, just just to be clear, even if, if for for the purposes of the warranty, you don't need to do the annual maintenance. Yeah, I know. So it's yeah. Thank you. Right. And then one more question: My wife wants to go to southern France end of April. Can I get there with the supercharges? <laughs> no, it's going to be close. I mean, I, I think I think. Probably, I wouldn't say 100%, but it's probably going to be ready. You get there 90%. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's 90% complete. <laughs> um, but yeah, for sure by the, su by the summer it's going to be a dramatic difference. Um, and I think there was like a specific question about um, yeah, how many in, in the Netherlands. I'm, I'm not sure of the exact number offhand, but it, I mean, I would expect it to be quite comprehensive because there's a lot of customers in the Netherlands and Benelux in general so it makes sense for us to have a high density of superchargers. I don't know the answer offhand but it's it's going to be, we, 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 here's the goal we want to reach which is you never have to worry about it ever. So, uh, and we'll, we'll get there as fast as we possibly can so that, um, we, uh, the, the, the car should also say like oh if you're headed somewhere and it sees that you might not have enough energy to get to your destination, it should automatically suggest, and here's the closest supercharger or potentially other charge location. But we, we want the superchargers to be so prevalent that you don't even have to think about it. We're planning, we're planning over, over 100 new superchargers throughout Europe uh, this year. That, that's our goal. And uh, you know, we also need to, I think, update our website and, and improve yeah. that a little bit. <laughs> right. It's show... like says now and end of year. Exactly. <laughs> um, it's a little... Not, not very good granularity. So, so we have a coming soon function in the US and we're going to add that uh, to the European website so you can get a better sense of when you'll be able to go to, to southern France or somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay, may I? Uh, oh, sorry, we better take it on the... Sorry, we have to. Yeah.
Okay. Uh, my name is Sandra, and my husband and I are both very happy Tesla drivers, and like most people here, we are more conscious of environment as ever. And most of us must have followed your Hyperloop extension oh, yeah. adventure. And uh, I was wondering if Tesla, who's... Uh, whose aim is to make as much sustainable energy as possible, will be thinking in the future to develop the Hyperloop as well, because many of us would be supportive and partnering if possible. And as it seems now with the open source, it's not going to work. Tesla is the community, the team is rolling out a lot of effectiveness, which uh, open source thing will take years to do. Right. Um, you know, it's... It, one has to prioritize things, so um, I, I mean, I think Hyperloop is something that's great, but honestly, it's uh, I think that the, the real need is sustainable, you know, basically electric cars. Um, like the world will be okay if, if the Hyperloop never gets developed. Well, the world will be okay, but if we don't transition to sustainable transport, if, if we can't accelerate the transition to electric cars, the world will not be okay. It will be bad. Um, so it's critical that uh, that we that we focus on the thing that's needed for the world. I mean, I'd love to work on Hyperloop, but it would result in less progress for Tesla. So that's the. Well, maybe a part of Tesla should work with this some progress. <laughs> At some point, it would be great. Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Jan Willem Heijnen. Uh, I'm almost a Tesla owner, not yet, unfortunately. Um, I had a question. If I look at the battery size of Tesla Model S, 85 kilowatt hours, um, look at the charge rate of a supercharger, uh, you could be doing 2C, which is about 170 kW. Uh, why is it 110? What is limiting you? And where are we going to in the future? Debbie, you want to talk about this? Um, yeah, well, well, two C is is pretty darn fast. You know, it's uh, that's uh, that's really you know pushing it on, on some of the different systems. You know, we are we're absolutely trying to push the envelope and charge as fast as we possibly can. Um, we've actually increased it quite a bit since we first delivered the cars. Uh, you know, and, and we we do have a roadmap to improve that as we you know develop you know improved battery packs and better cooling systems. But today we're going about as fast as the cars can really go. We we might be able to stretch it up to about 135 kilowatts. And, and we're starting to roll some superchargers out that can do that. But you know, right now it's kind of right at the matched limit of what the battery in the car can accept, the cooling system in the car, and the superchargers themselves. So it, it's pretty well balanced. So it's chemistry where we're talking about, and not not uh, anything else. It's chemistry which it's, is it, looking right. Exactly. Yes, it's it's chemistry. Exactly. It's the the challenge is like we, we wanted to not uh, cause degradation of the pack. So you can, you can, in principle, charge at a 2C rate, but it, it would have an impact on the cycle life of the pack. Um, so you, you basically charge at maybe 1.5C or something like that uh, without having meaningful degradation. And it also depends on the temperature and state of charge of the pack. Because as you get to a high state of charge, it's kind of like, as, as you, I'm sure you probably know, it's like yeah. trying to fill, fill a glass of water down to the last drum. Yeah. And you, so you have to slow down to, to make sure it, 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 it does it right. Okay. So um, are, we, are we in the future 14, 15 going towards 200 kilowatt? Or? Um, in, in the, in the, I mean, where we see it sort of settling out um, in, you know, for probably a few years is around the 135 kilowatt level that JV mentioned. Now 135 kilowatts is, is a lot. I mean, it's, you know, a typical house is doing two kilowatts. So. <laughs> This is like a lot of power. Um, and Why could you talk about the next generation of batteries? That, that would be interesting. Well, I, I think there's not... We, we, we don't expect there to be a giant change in batteries for probably the next four or five years. Maybe five years, I'd say. There'll be uh, moderate, you know, small improvements, but not, not giant improvements. Um, you know, ten years from now, I think it could be a different story. Um, but uh, but I think most people will find that at the 135 kilowatt level, uh, it, that's really charging fast. Um, you know, so you're um, yeah, I mean you're charging at several uh, like uh, six 600 kilometers an hour, so you know that kind of thing. <laughs> so yeah. Also, a, a small note for for those that are sort of sticklers for the, the kilowatt hour level in terms of the supercharging. Um, the, the superchargers right now are tuned to be fairly conservative. So they, uh, it, it's all about like being super, super safe. Um, and then as we 
uh, get better at this and we can monitor the, the data from the field, we'll, we'll start turning it up towards the maximum rate. So if you see it being a little bit less than 120 kilowatts, it's because the, we're being very conservative in the beginning. But you can expect over time that uh, all the stations will be actually 135, uh, or you know, right, right around there. That, yeah, and, and most of the stations in Europe will be 135, um, because, uh, yeah, so, okay. Uh, I followed the company for uh, 10 years now, I think. So as a teenager, I uh, started to follow the idea and made my dad so crazy he just bought one. So, <laughs> All right, cool. uh, My question is actually about the careers. Um, uh, because I'm uh, finishing up my, uh, my studies, I'm graduating in uh, six months, logistics. And um, I'm already apply, uh, applying. But I still didn't get a response. And if I try, if I try to call, uh, they always uh, redirect me to the website, which the status is not changing. Right, so, so yeah, it's a loop. It's a good fish. So, it's a good fish. Yeah. Give me your car. Okay. Sure. I'll take your car. Absolutely. So can you help me out uh, with that? Sure. Would you have a car or information? I'll make sure you get a response. Thank you. Very much. Well, hey, EVTV. Uh, today I'm here with Vincent Avers, a self-proclaimed EV advocate and one of the few people that actually has a, well, the first ever sponsored Tesla that I saw, KPM New Motion, Tesla Transformation, KNAB, whatever that may be. And I just got to drive around in this great little Tesla. Um, Vincent and I have been uh, talking up a storm. He took a little video of us and the new electric shop. And I thought I'd talk to him for a little bit and see what he's actually doing with EVs. So, Vincent. Great having you here today. It was impressive to see your company. And it's impressive that a garage, that a, guys, a couple of guys in the garage can be a car manufacturer, a, a, a boat manufacturer, do components, electric components of the whole world, and have a mountain bike which is faster than the fastest Olympic uh, one. So <laughs> impressive what you all do here, Rick. We, uh, we aim to please. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with it all, and uh, we want to share that stuff. I can see that. And that's actually what you've really been doing as well. I've seen you've put a lot of asses into the seat of that Tesla. You let people drive themselves and let them have the feeling. What got you interested in doing it this way, and uh, what, are your, what are your aims with what you're doing? Yeah, well, first, I mean, I am a guy who loves new technology. So I basically am a trend watcher mm -hmm. and, and an entrepreneur. So I started companies, and three years ago, I basically go like, okay, there's all these gadgets and digital stuff is wonderful, but it really doesn't change the world that much. It's more doing things, you know, changing communication, administration. But now I see that ICT is changing the way we do energy. It's changing the way we do mobility. It's changing the way we do healthcare. It's changing everything. Mm -hmm. And that is a real fundamental change. And I go like, what is an essential trend for the future? Sure. And for me, energy is the most important thing. Core. If we don't have energy, we will have war mm -hmm. and we will completely diminish as a species. So I said energy transformation is the most important thing because oil doesn't take us a long time. You know, peak oil and that Absolutely. kind of stuff. The next 50 years a problem. Now, Oil, you know, we have enough gas, we have enough coal, we have enough solar, and we have enough wind. Yeah. But oil is a really a pain in the neck uh, kind yeah. of stuff. And 80% of oil is used for driving cars. Yeah, we have 800 million cars in this world. Absolutely. And in 2030, we have two billion cars. Two over, billion cars. Yeah, and it's up exponentially. Yes, and the oil is going a really big, big yeah. problem. So I go, look, how can this be changed? And it's one is cars. Mm -hmm electric cars, mm -hmm. and then smart grids, yeah. together with solar, which price have gone down 100, and wind energy. So sure. that triangle is my interest. I'm a right. trend watcher on that kind of stuff. And generate, I bought- Generate, store, drive. Yes. Generate, store, drive. Generate, generate store, store drive. drive. And then we need, you know, battery techniques are really yeah. important. Storage techniques are really important. But the smart grids, which has to deliver everything. So that's, I've been studying that for uh, three, four years. I first bought a Nissan Leaf. Okay. That was the first car, I go like, that's a real car. Yeah. That really drives wonderful. It looks like shit, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't, it will not box. please, it will not yeah. please, but I basically, I drove that, I put in four cameras in that uh, sure. car, I did 24 hours, seven days a week, video, um, video uh, broadcasting, live streaming, yeah. yeah, live streaming out of the car. I had six SIM cards in a box, which basically delivered two and a half megabits sure. with 3G, mm -hmm. and I basically had 
3,000 people in the car driving it and I made an interview out of everybody. Sure. And a little company came out, came out of that, InCrowd, it's an application. Yeah, I've heard of those guys. Yeah, you put it on your iPhone, InCrowd, uh, on your Android or your iPhone. Sure. And it will upload a video on the background, it will put a f an, um, an, uh, pre roll in front of it, a logo, a, a post roll, it will upload it to the right YouTube channel, sure. it will do all the social media. So, but I put in lots of people and try to find out what is the innovation, what's the innovation in batteries, in smart grid, in electric vehicles. So that after two years. And let me just ask you, where are the two questions always, how far does it go and how long does it take to charge? Yeah, the, uh, the Nissan Leaf goes about 100 kilometers, mm -hmm. so about 60, 70 miles, mm -hmm. and it takes about 30 minutes to charge on a fast right. uh, charger. But in the end, it really doesn't matter because for 95% of all drivers, it's always full when you start, and you still have batteries when you end the day. Yeah, so now you're, you're, you're saying, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, now you're saying of something, 80% of the people in the Netherlands do not have their own driveway. No, exactly. So they have to do it in a public space. Sure. That is one problem. Yeah. But for 20% of the people, they have their own driveway. In the morning, you have 100, uh, you, sure. have, uh, you have 80 miles, and yeah. that's for 90% of the people is enough. But if you want to go to grandma, yeah. Or you want to go, you need a fast charger sure. in between. And there's now a hundred fast chargers in the Netherlands, so it's quite convenient yeah. to drive it there. The fast net. Yeah. yeah, and the fast net, which is come. We will have an unbelievable well-educated charging system infrastructure, infrastructure in the Netherlands. Yeah. And it will be, and we are now at 5% of sales yeah. are electric vehicles, and we'll go to 25% yeah. in, uh, in 2020. Well, that's the great thing, the electric grid, we don't have to roll it out, it's there. We've got to add a few smart plugs. Yeah. You're but a million, to add a million yeah. plugs is not a big deal. We already not have really. 20 million plugs, so now yeah. add another million, which are a little bit faster. Who needs fucking high pressure hydrogen stations? I don't. I got electricity <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I saw a 700, I mean 700 bar, I saw in YouTube, there's a yeah. great movie, what happens if a 700 bar, <laughs> if, it, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it goes up in flames? Yeah. Anyway, I mean, I really got enthusiastic about EV, and then I upgraded to the Tesla when it came about. Absolutely. I go like, well, you know, it's just like uh, I, 500 kilometers. And now it's really interesting. I drive this thing around, and now everybody is motivated by the mind, yeah. and motivated by the heart, and by, motivated by whatever here, you yeah. know, this yeah. underneath this underbelly. And the Tesla is a fantastic product to show other manufacturers that it's possible. Because sure. Tesla itself is not important. Tesla itself as is seat. really as not a as, a, as a yeah. number of cars, because yeah. they do 20,000 cars, 40,000 cars. They will do 500,000 cars in yeah. 2020. And it will be a drop in the bucket. And yes, at the, and when they have do 500,000 cars, then that they have done a million cars altogether. Yeah. And that means one month of production for General Motors, one month of production yeah. for, for uh, to Toyota, one month of production for Ford. So that, yeah. that, that's not the thing. Yeah. But they inspire everybody. It can be done and it should be done. Absolutely. So that's what I like about Elon Musk. And he basically, we, we, we saw each other on Friday yeah. with Elon. At the town hall meeting, the Model S owners. I gave yeah. crash that shit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you had, a personal, you had a personal talk with GB, so yeah. that was nice. Never got it on video. Starstruck no fanboy guy. He basically meets all that guy. He meets all these famous people and he doesn't, he has a camera for me and for all that, with me. but not for GB. No, Come no. on. I will. Anyway. It's right here in my heart, JB. You and me, we're friends now. <laughs> yeah. But me, what my goal is, is to basically, um, I, I, I let everybody drive the Tesla, yeah. I uh, broadcast it, I make a video out of it, and I tell them the story of guys we need to change, and it will be able to change, we need to do three things, you know, EV needs to be big, smart grids we need to do, and we need to basically look at solar and wind energy because yeah. it's going down in price so dramatically Absolutely. fast. And you can have a comfortable luxury life. Absolutely. Because this car is now 70,000 euro and it will be 35,000 the next sure. uh, next generation. But all these other, when Toyota puts their mind to it, they can also make a fantastic That's car true. for 30,000 euro sure. electric. So that is my inspiration. A big industry, mobility, 10% of the gross national product, energy, 10% of the yeah. gross national product. And they are fundamental for everything we do. So that is my inspiration and I tell everybody about it. And my interest is everybody, is, if somebody knows a lot about the next generation battery technology, you know, like I'm really interested in lithium air yep. batteries or the lithium sulfates or... The hmm? Titanet batteries are coming out, lithium Titanet, the LETIO2. Yeah. Is, uh, they're very good for fast charging. BMW is doing it together with ECC and Humber. 
and they're coming out with these cells next year. There's a lot of really cool battery tech happening I right now. I expect that toys we, from are, are, we are in the internet phase of 1994, and yeah. the next 10 years will be very interesting for yeah. EV, EV everything. Yeah. And I think that's we're in the phase exactly now. We're going from 96.6 baud rate to like megabits upload rate. Yeah. Once you have that, you get ecosystems and apps and stuff after that. But we're really in the hardware phase right now. Yeah, we're in the garage phase. Yeah. We're in the garage. We're Which in the cool phase to be. We're in the 1980 in the in the ICT yeah. world. I mean, and yeah. you guys are doing fantastic things. I'm really I'm looking forward to see this car which is next fun. to me. It'll be fun. Yeah. We'll get you driving it. Yeah, right, oh, right definitely. When we have it. Absolutely. It'll be very exciting. And yeah, so if so and if people, I mean, if people, yeah. if Americans Sure. You know, because this guy, I mean, this is a nice international audience. You have the real geeks and the real people who know. You know who you Drop are. Drop me a line when you land in the skip hole, you know, yeah. and I'll basically come and pick you up and drive you to your hotel and we can just basically, I want to learn Excellent. everything there is. So it's Vincent at Everts.net and my website is teslatransformation.com. And definitely also follow at Vincent E on Twitter. He also has the Thanks app, really. so he's showing where the car is at any time. You can log into that shit. And personal driver, Schiphol to anywhere in Holland. You heard it here first. So Vincent, once again, great meeting you and we'll be in touch, man. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at you and all your products and I'm gonna have great fun doing that. Thank you. Cool, man. Let's <laughs> do it.